Hello everyone. So previous class we discussed about the anatomy of the shoulder complex and the components which form the shoulder complex. There were four joints which form the shoulder complex. Those were glenohumeral joint, acromioclavicular joint, sternoclavicular joint and scapulothoracic joint. We also discussed about the osteokinematics at the glenohumeral joint. The movements that were occurring at the glenohumeral joints were abduction and adduction, internal rotation, external rotation, flexion and extension. So the movements occurring and the planes and axes for glenohumeral joint were simple. Now we'll discuss about the osteokinematics of the sternoclavicular joint, scapulothoracic joint and acromioclavicular joint. So what are the movements that occur in these three joints? These three joints move as a unit. So uh, there cannot be a individual movement of sternoclavicular joint or there cannot be a single movement of acromioclavicular joint. All these three joints move together. So the movements that occur in these three joints are the elevation and depression, protraction and retraction. The protraction and retraction has many units of movements. Those are adduction and abduction of the scapula, internal rotation and external rotation of the scapula, anterior tilt and posterior tilt of the scapula. And we have one more movement in this uh, three unit, three joint unit that is upward rotation and downward rotation. So all three joints work as a unit to produce this movement that is an important point. So here in the picture you can see elevation means the scapula and the clavicle moves upward or superiorly. Depression means the scapula and the clavicle moves downward. Adduction means the scapula is moving towards the spine and abduction means the scapula is moving away from the midline or the spine. Upward rotation of the scapula you can see the inferior angle of the scapula is moving away from the spine whereas the superior angle is coming towards the spine. Downward rotation means the inferior angle is moving towards the spine whereas the superior angle is moving away from the spine. Adduction and abduction of the scapula, internal and external rotation of the scapula and anterior tilt and posterior tilt of the scapula which occurs in acromioclavicular joint occurs together to produce a protraction and retraction of the scapula. Let's view this video demonstration to see how the units move. For creating uh, elevation and depression you can see the sternoclavicular joint and the acromioclavicular joint has to move to create an elevation of clavicle and scapula. You can see here the sternoclavicular joint there is a movement occurring there due to which there is elevation and depression as well as there is a movement at the acromioclavicular joint. So what is the direction of the scapular displacement during elevation and depression? So during elevation scapula translates in superior direction. So you can see the scapula translates superiorly during elevation and during depression scapula translates inferiorly. This is very simple to understand. This movement of scapula occurs in which plane? It occurs in coronal plane. Now the movement of clavicle during elevation and depression it is same as the uh, scapular movement and what is the plane where the clavicle moves? during elevation depression it is in coronal plane the range of motion of this movement is about 15 degree in each direction that is elevation of 15 degree and depression of 15 degree adds up to 30 degree of movement the osteokinematics during protraction and retraction the protraction and retraction as we already discussed previously occurs because of many movements which are abduction and adduction, internal and external rotation and anterior tilt and posterior tilt. So during protraction there will be abduction of the scapula, during retraction there will be adduction of the scapula. Let's view this video demonstration to see how protraction and retraction occurs. There has to be a abduction and adduction of the scapula to create a protraction and retraction. 
Along with abduction and adduction of the scapula, there has to be external rotation and internal rotation of the scapula. Moreover, there is a anterior shift and the posterior shift of the clavicle. For all this movement to occur, there has to be movement at the sternoclavicular joint and acromioclavicular joint. Due to movement at sternoclavicular joint and acromioclavicular joint, there will be a movement at the scapulothoracic joint. For creating protraction and retraction, there should be an anterior tilt and the posterior tilt of the scapula. So during protraction, there is an anterior tilt and during retraction, there is a posterior tilt. Next movement that contribute for protraction and retraction is the internal and external rotation of the scapula. I can understand that the movements of acromioclavicular joint, sternoclavicular joint and scapulothoracic joint is quite complex but if you read it again and again it becomes easier. So the next movement that contributes to protraction and retraction is the internal and external rotation of the scapula. So scapula pivots away and towards during protraction and retraction. So internal rotation of the scapula occurs during protraction whereas external rotation of the scapula occurs during retraction. You can see in this picture the movement of internal external rotation mainly occurs in the acromioclavicular joint. So during protraction the scapula internally rotates and during retraction the scapula externally rotates. Now let's check the clavicular movement during protraction and retraction. During protraction, the clavicle translates in anterior direction and rotates anteriorly and during retraction, clavicle, trans, uh, clavicle translates po in posterior direction and rotates posteriorly. So there is a two movements occurring at the sternoclavicular joint and at the acromioclavicular joint due to which the clavicle will translate anteriorly during protraction as well as rotate anteriorly whereas during retraction the clavicle translates posteriorly as well as rotates posteriorly the last combined movement of these three joints that is uh, scapulothoracic joint acromioclavicular joint and sternoclavicular joint is the upward and downward rotation so this upward and downward rotation occurs during raising the arm overhead for this upward and downward rotation to occur, there should be elevation and depression of the at the sternoclavicular joint and upward and downward rotation at the acromioclavicular joint. Now let us discuss the overall kinematics of the shoulder abduction. That is 180 degree of abduction is achieved by the movement at the glenohumeral joint, movement at the acromioclavicular joint, movement at the sternoclavicular joint and movement at the scapulothoracic joint. So all these four joints contribute to create a 180 degree of shoulder complex abduction. You can see this demonstration video which is a scapulohumeral rhythm that is scapula and humerus along with clavicle move to create 180 degree of abduction. If only humerus moves then the overall abduction is reduced that is to 120 degree because glenohumeral joint gives only range of 120 degree. There is about 45 degree of external rotation at the glenohumeral joint along with this 120 degree of glenohumeral abduction. So here you can see there is an external rotation occurring at the glenohumeral joint about 45 degree of external rotation. Because of this external rotation movement, the greater tubercle of the glenohumeral joint gets cleared from the acromion process. Therefore, there will be slight decrease in restriction of the movement. Now, along with this abduction of 120 degree and external rotation of 45 degree at glenohumeral joint, if the clavicle elevates, then there will be more range of motion at the shoulder complex for abduction. So there is about 25 degree of 
clavicle elevation at the sternoclavicular joint, which contributes to overall abduction. Now, if the scapula also moves, then there will be even more increase in the range of motion. As you can see here, the scapula is rotating upward to contribute some more movement for abduction. So the scapula moves upward, that is upward rotation of the scapula is about 35 degree. So this 35 degree of upward rotation along with clavicular elevation of 25 degree will add up to the overall abduction. Now in addition to upward rotation of the scapula, you can add up external rotation of the scapula of about 10 degree and posterior rotation of the clavicle. So these two combined movement at the sternoclavicular joint and acromioclavicular joint will add up to create a protraction movement. This protraction movement will add up a range for abduction of the shoulder complex. Now let's summarize this scapulohumeral rhythm. The scapulohumeral rhythm or the overall kinematics of the shoulder abduction was first studied by Inman and colleagues in 1944. The data was collected by using two dimensional radiographs and pin inserted into the shoulder bone in live subject. Then they found out that the overall 180 degree of abduction was not only achieved by glenohumeral joint but also the contribution from other three joints that is scapulothoracic joint, acromioclavicular joint and sternoclavicular joint. So we can summarize this scapulohumeral rhythm into six kinematic principles. The first principle is simple that is 180 degree of abduction at the shoulder complex is achieved by 120 degree of glenohumeral joint movement and 60 degree of scapulothoracic upward rotation. This upward rotation of 60 degrees achieved by elevation of sternoclavicular joint which is about 25 degree of elevation and upward rotation of acromioclavicular joint which is about 35 degree. Clavicle also retracts at the sternoclavicular joint along with scapula posteriorly tilting and externally rotating to create a protraction movement. Clavicle also posteriorly rotates up to 25 degree and there will be a external rotation of the glenohumeral joint up to 45 degree because of which the greater tubercle impingement on the acromion will be reduced therefore there will be some more range of abduction. So this is an important topic that is scapulohumeral rhythm. If the patient comes with decreased range of motion of this abduction then we can predict there may be some problem at the glenohumeral joint there may be problem at the sternoclavicular joint or acromioclavicular joint. There is rarely any problem with the scapulothoracic joint as it is a false joint. If the glenohumeral joint range that is 120 degree is reduced or compromised because of the stiffness of the glenohumeral joint, then the scapulothoracic joint has to compensate that loss in the range of motion. If there is a stiffness of the acromioclavicular joint and the sternoclavicular joint then glenohumeral joint has to compensate the movement because of which there may be a lot of pathologies like impingement of the supraspinatus which is one of the common pathology. So the shoulder girdle muscles which attach to the scapula, clavicle and the humerus should be in uh, optimal length and strength to maintain this 180 degree of range of motion and all these four joints especially the Sternoclavicular joint, acromioclavicular joint and glenohumeral joints should be mobile to contribute to 180 degree of movement.